good morning students in our last class we have studied about the five kingdom classification given by r h whitaker in 1969 he has given the five kingdom classification named monera protista fungi plantae and animalia so in this class we are going to study about the main features of the kingdom monera and protista so let's start with the kingdom monera the kingdom monera includes all prokaryote unicellular the primitive living organisms these are microscopic in nature and the cell wall is present that is made up of peptidoglycan the cell wall is very rigid in it means it provide shapes and structure to the bacteria these cell walls are present between the plasma membrane and a layer made up of glycocalyx it is single layer in gram positive bacteria whereas it is double layer in gram negative bacteria so what are these gram positive and gram negative uh, negative bacteria these are the bacteria that show the staining in gram stain if it shows staining of red color it is gram positive if it does not it is gram negative bacteria as it is a prokaryote the genetic material is not organized because of the absence of the nucleus membrane so the dna deoxyribonucleic acid the genetic material is seen naked in monera the membrane bound organelles are absent for example the ribosomes are present here that are of uh, 70s unit whereas the organelles like endoplasmic reticulum golgi bodies are absent in it it reproduce asexually without showing any variation means without showing any gene recombination flagella it is a white like structure or you can say a long thread like structure may be present of single strand that is made up of protein flagellin the bacteria are the most abundant microorganisms present all over the world or you can say all over the earth in any climate okay if we are talking about hot climate it is also present over there if we are talking about cold it is present there salty area it is present there okay so these are the monera or you can say the bacteria that are found that can survive in all climatic condition according to shape we can divide bacteria in different forms for example if we are talking about a spherical shape it is known as coccus spirulum it is spiral in shape rod shape for example bacillus and comma shape that is vibrio bacteria so let's start with the first group that is archaebacteria these are also known as living fossils these are the primitive prokaryotes that live in any condition like we can say the extreme salty condition such type of bacteria are known as halophiles in hot spring these are known as thermoacidophiles and the marshy area these are known as methanogens these bacteria different differ from other bacteria because they are having different cell wall structure as in these cell wall the peptidoglycan is absent the membrane is made up of monolayer branched lipids these bacteria are the anaerobes and may be of two type the first one is facultative anaerobes that survive in any condition or we can say in the presence of oxygen they are able to survive for example thermoacidophiles whereas the second type is obligate anaerobes means these are the bacteria that only survive in anaerobic conditions or you can say in the absence of oxygen but can survive in the presence of but cannot survive in the presence of oxygen for example methanogens so what are these methanogens these are the bacteria that are present in the gut gut means the alimentary canal of the ruminants ruminants are the herbivores 
or you can say grass grazing animals like cows and buffalo these bacteria help in the production of biogas from dung of these animals and also help in the fermentation of cellulose fermentation means breakdown of cellulose okay the next category of monera is eubacteria these are the true bacteria and in this category the cyanobacteria is present that is a blue green algae so these blue green algae are gram positive photosynthetic bacteria i have told you earlier that what is gram positive or negative gram positive that shows red color in the presence of gram stain so these are photosynthetic so photosynthetic hai that's why because of the presence of chlorophylls another pigments that are present except the chlorophyll is keratinoids and phycobilins these are unicellular colonial or you can say live in colony filamentous and can survive in any condition or you can say can uh, have habitat that are uh, in different nature for example they can survive in fresh water they can survive in marine water they can survive on terrestrial land okay but a very important feature of these types of bacteria is a specialized cell that is known as heterocyst cell these cells help in the nitrogen fixation as you have studied earlier in a the second type of autotrophic eubacteria are chemosynthetic bacteria these bacteria oxidize inorganic substance like nitrate nitrite ammonia to produce energy or you can say these bacteria help in the biogeochemical cycle of nitrogen phosphorus and sulfur then the other type of bacteria are heterotrophic bacteria these bacteria act as a decomposers for example the u bacteria help in the formation of curd so the lactobacillus bacteria is a form of u bacteria some bacteria help in the formation of antibiotic and i have told you earlier that some help in the nitrogen fixation in leguminous plant for example nostoc or anabina some of these bacteria are pathogenic pathogenic means disease causing bacteria so such disease that are caused by these bacteria are cholera typhoid tetanus citrus canker citrus canker is a plant disease okay these eu bacteria are able to reproduce by fission but in some unfavorable conditions they can produce small spores and these spores are the reproductive unit for these bacteria showing the sexual reproduction whenever they got favorable condition one of the most important example of this type of bacteria or you can say eu bacteria is mycoplasma it is the simplest the smallest cell of the world in earlier classes you have studied about the smallest cell is pplo pleuro pneumonia like organism it is also known as mycoplasma so these are the bacteria that lack cell wall and can survive without oxygen and you can say these are the bacteria that can cause disease in plant as well as animals now start with kingdom protista given by ans heckel it includes all the unicellular eukaryotes that live in colony form these are aquatic so these are the connecting links between monera and multicellular eukaryote the kingdom protista shows the mode of nutrition autotrophic as well as heterotrophic if we are talking about autotrophic it shows photosynthetic mode of nutrition so some of them are having chlorophyll in them for photosynthesis process if heterotrophic in nature these may be saprophyte parasites or holozoites saprophytes that survive on dead and decay 
organisms parasites that can survive on a living host whereas holozoic that convert complex food into the simplest form before absor absorbing it for locomotion it have flagella that is 11 standard in the arrangement or you can say with 9 plus 2 arrangement of microtubules these are the small unit for the flagella and cilia these units are made up of tubulin as protista is eukaryote so it have membrane bound nucleus in it that consists of two or more dna molecule as a genetic material in it it reproduces asexually by binary fission multiple fission or budding whereas sexually by the process of cell fusion and zygote formation. The first group of protista is chrysophytes. These includes all the golden algae and diatoms that are found in fresh water as well as marine water. These are microscopic in nature. So it is very small. That's why we can say we can only identify it if it is in the form of colony. They can move or you can say float from one place to another by water currents. These are photosynthetic in nature, so having chlorophyll pigment in them. A special feature of diatoms are these have cell wall make, forming and overlapping shells that fit together like a soap box. The wall is embedded with silica and is indestructible or you can say cannot be broken down easily these diatoms left behind a large amount of cell wall deposit on their habitat so after accumulation over a billion of year ago the earth where these cell wall get deposited it is known as diatomaceous earth means वहाँ पर आपको सिर्फ cell wall के complete layer नजर आती है, okay? It is gritty in nature means having brittle or you can say sparkle showing in nature and silica is there so silica is very slippery in nature so it is used in polishing, filtration of oil and forming of some medicinal syrups. These are also known as the chief producers of ocean as most of the phytoplankton are is in the form of diatoms. The second group is di dinoflagellates. These are again the marine and photosynthetic organisms. They can appear in any color. It may be yellow, green, brown, blue or red depend upon the main pigment present in them for example if you are talking about plants so plants have green color because of the presence of chlorophyll and some the color of flowers is because of the presence of other plastid in them similarly in dinoflagellates the color appearance depends on the main pigment that is present in the cell the cell wall again here is made up of cellulose these dinoflagellates have mostly two flagella one that is present longitudinally and the second one is that is present transversely in the furrow between the wall plate one is longer and one is smaller in size the red color dinoflagellates for example goniaxilis undergoes rapid multiplication by binary fission quickly and make the C appear red. So the red C is having red dinoflagellate in them because of these red, uh, uh, red dinoflagellate, the color of C is red. These also produce some toxic substance that kill the marine animals or you can say the fishes of that area. The next group is euglenoid group. This group is having a habitat of fresh water. 
that is found in stagnant water area stagnant means without water current or you can say thehra hua pani jo pani behta nahi hai thehra hua pani so euglenoids are found in stagnant water instead of cell wall these contain a protein rich layer called pellicle this layer make it flexible as the cell wall is rigid and it is not having any cell wall so the body of euglenoid is flexible in nature they have again two flagella a short one and a small one a long one they are photosynthetic in nature so they are having chlorophyll in it in the presence of sunlight they act as a photosynthetic organism whereas if the sunlight is not present they act as an heterotroph and predate on small organism jab sunlight presence hoti hai to ye photosynthesis process karte hain lekin agar sunlight absent hai to ye chote chote apne se bhi chote jo organisms hain unko khate hain the most evident example for euglenoid is euglena the next one is slime molds slime molds are saprophytic protista saprophytes means that survive on dead and decay organisms so they have body that moves along decaying twigs and leaves engulfing organic material so they can produce some digestive enzyme and convert it into the simplest form and absorb it under suitable condition they form an aggregation called plasmodium which may grow and spread over several feet okay so these are having the animals that aggregate aggregate means uh, after division as a plasmodium as a uh, property that if it uh, is not getting any favorable condition it shows multiple fission same with uh, is with slime molds okay so they can aggregate to form or you can say to spread over a large area during unfavorable conditions the plasmodium differentiate and forms fruiting body having spore on the tips and this spores have two walls on it they are extremely resistant and survive for many year in any adverse condition so these are the fossils of the parasites okay kya hai beta inme ki agar unfavorable condition hai to unfavorable condition ke andar ये क्या करेंगे जैसे प्लाज्मोडियम डिवाइड होकर एग्रीगेट और इकट्ठा होना शुरू होता है सेम ये भी क्या करेंगे एग्रीगेट करेंगे इकट्ठा होना शुरू हो जाएंगे और सेम टाइम पे ये बॉडी डिफ्रेंसिएशन करेंगे डिफ्रेंसिएशन मींस हैविंग प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग बॉडी जो है uh, उसके जो पार्ट्स है प्रॉपर फंक्शनिंग uh, को गेन करेंगे ओके okay? तो इनके जो टिप पे है वो स्पोर्ट्स प्रेजेंट है एंड दे केन सर्वाइव फॉर सो मेनी ईयर्स विदाउट एनी इफेक्ट ऑन देयर बॉडी चाहे कंडीशन कैसी भी हो हाई टेम्परेचर लो टेम्परेचर ह्यूमिड कैसी भी कंडीशन है दे केन इजली सर्वाइव सो लेट स्टार्ट विद नेक्स्ट ग्रुप दैट इज प्रोटोजोन प्रोटोजोन आर हेट्रोट्रॉप एंड लिव एज अ प्रीडेटर और पैरासाइट सो दीज आर द प्रिमेटिव रिलेटिव ऑफ एनिमल्स बिकॉज दे एक्ट एज अ प्रीडेटर्स ओके सो द मेन फोर ग्रुप ऑफ दीज प्रोटोजोन आर amoeboid flagellate ciliated and sporozoic so the first one is amoeboid protozoans these are the organisms that can live in fresh water sea water as well as moist soil they shows a formation of false feet known as pseudopodia for example in amoeba it move and capture the prey by pseudopodia so these can move and capture the prey by putting out pseudopodia if they are marine in nature they have silica shell on their surface this is the most important one some of these are parasite in nature for example antamoeba it cause disease the next one is the flagellate protozoans these are the free living or parasitic protozoans that are aquatic and have 
of flagella for locomotion. Flagella is a hair like structure that is present on the body and help in locomotion process. These are parasitic in nature and cause diseases. For example, sleeping sickness is caused by flagellate protozoan that is trypanosoma. The third group of protozoan is ciliated as the name shows it is having cilia all over the body. So it have a thousands of cilia that is present all over the body and these are the cilia that are brush like structure that is present all over the body. These are aquatic animals that have cilia for the locomotion. They have a cap cavity that opens outside of the cell surface. So whenever there is a food near, ab near about these protozoans, the cilia coordinate with the gut to take in the food. For example, in paramecium. The next one is the sporozoans. These are the organisms that are parasitic in nature and shows infectious spores in their life cycle. The most common is plasmodium that is malarial parasite that cause malaria in human population. These sporozoans have a capacity to reproduce by sexually as well as asexually mode of reproduction. So today we have studied about two kingdom. The first one is Monera and the second one is Protesta. So what you have to do, you have to read it thoroughly from your NCRT book.